Okay, hello Richard. Hello Steve, good to see you. So, I am, nice to see you, I'm very happy to have with me today Richard Simcott, who, and he won't like this term, but he's kind of like the godfather of these <laughs> international polyglot gatherings. And in fact, he is because he created the first one and he's a very well-known polyglot and presence in the sort of international polyglot community. And today I want to talk about, or with Richard, about his latest project. So welcome, Richard. Well, thank you, Steve. Well, I don't know who you are then. If I'm the godfather, who are you? <laughs> You're going to have to think of a nice nickname for yourself, Steve. <laughs> I'm the old guy sitting on the park bench. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> at least, at least you're anyway. are you throwing beer cans at people who pass by as well or not? Darn right. <laughs> uh, waiting for someone to come and sit beside me so I can talk to them in some language. But you, of course, are the creator, in my opinion, of the Polyglot Gathering. Yeah. I think it was called the Polyglot Conference. And then there were other similar events, Polyglot Gathering, Longfest in Montreal, and, and everyone collabor collaborates very closely in all of these yeah. things. And there was going to be a Polyglot Conference with the collaboration of Longfest in Cholula, Mexico. And now with the COVID, that's not going to happen. And instead, you have embarked on a new idea Indeed. And I would ask you to explain it. Absolutely. Well, I'm thrilled to be here and thrilled to be talking to you and to tell you about what we're doing. So this year, obviously, with what's going on around the world with the pandemic, our original plan was to go to Chula, like you said, and now we're going to make it a truly global conference. We've been given this opportunity to really open it up to the entire world. So what's going to happen is we're all going to be using the polyglotconference.com website as a base. Uh, people can register there already. There's a forum where people are already talking to each other ahead of the conference, and we're going to put information and drip through, feed it through that uh, platform. And then what we'll do is we'll have an entire area where people can talk to each other, they can practice their languages. Our sponsor italki is organizing rooms with their teachers as well to have kind of guided conversations and they will take place all the way through the day no matter where you are in the world you will always have the opportunity to meet up with people so in that sense it will be truly global we're also going to oh, sorry go ahead can i stop for a sec give me once again the website the url because mm -hmm. we're going to flash it on the screen okay polyglotconference.com okay and the dates the dates are from the 16th to the 25th of october Okay, sorry to interrupt you. No, you're Please very continue. welcome. Very important information to share. And yeah, it's going to be, you heard right, it's a 10-day period this year. So what we're doing is we're taking advantage of what we've been given. So instead of just making lemonade out of lemons, we're making really sweet lemonade that we want to drink. So basically, with all of the presentations, they're pre-recorded, which means that we're going to have a Netflix drop style on the Friday evening. We will drop all of the presentations People can watch them at their leisure. There's no fear of missing out. If people want to get together and organize viewing parties, they can do that. They can chat around the presentations. They can watch them, binge watch them if they want. If they don't feel like talking, then they can just jump in and start answer, asking questions in the comment section on the videos themselves. And then they can also join in with live aspects of the conference, talking to different sponsors like Link, for example, um, like other sponsors that we've got with italki teachers around the whole time and the other sponsors we've got advertised on the website too. You have a chance to, to meet, mingle, meet with other participants, practice your languages, get to know each other, take part in some of the great you talk activities with Langfest for the competitions, you know, these sort of fun activities too. There's going to be a lot going on over the 10 days. But the cool thing is, is we do have 10 days. We don't have to rush you. We don't have to have everybody waiting up all night because this fear of missing out. You're going to be able to fit it around your normal schedule. If your weekend happens to be Thursday, Friday instead of Saturday, Sunday, then you can take part whenever you're ready, whenever you want. And it's also donation based. So if you can't afford or you don't feel able to afford at the moment to give money, you're still welcome to join us. Wherever you are in the world, all you need is your internet connection, something to log into onto the website. And of course, 
a love of language. You don't have to be a polyglot. It's called a polyglot conference only because it was born out of that community, original community online. You just have to have a love of language. So even if you're interested in learning your first language, you're going to be made very, very welcome. And then the other very important thing is you need a smile. And even Steve does a smile for us okay. at these things. <laughs> questions. A few questions that come to mind. First of all, what languages are these presentations going to be in? That's a very so good So far, question. based on what you have so far. So, so far, we've got a number of languages. Um, so we've got, um, off the top of my head, we've got one in Russian that I know. We've got them in Ladino, um, in Portuguese, uh, obviously in English, <laughs> quite a lot in English. People often do tend to, to write them in English. We encourage other languages, but we do get a lot in English. Um, there's going to be one in ASL. There are a couple of multilingual ones already, um, which have various languages included, like Finnish, um, Swedish, Italian, um, I think Spanish as well. We've got, we're going to have a number of others already just waiting on them to come in. Okay, now, question. Uh, since it's uh, pre-recorded and you mentioned Netflix, are there subtitles? Are there translated subtitles? So what we're trying to do is make sure that the subtitles are ready for when the conference starts. So some of the videos have already got subtitles attached to them, and some of them are translated into different languages. We have one that's got English and Persian subtitles, for example, because it's about mm -hmm. um, Iran and, and about the Persian language. So... Um, we have got some of them already, but we're working with a volunteer team now to create mm -hmm. subtitles where we don't have them for all of them. And it's not just for the language aspect, but also for the accessibility for people with, um, say, hearing issues where they can't hear what's being said. They can at least right. follow by reading them. Mm -hmm. And uh, another thing is the original intention was that the Polyglot Conference would take place in Cholula, Mexico. Mm -hmm. Is there any particular Mexican Cholula theme to this conference or is it purely global? So this conference itself is global. Um, of course, we are looking towards Mexico as well. So one of the themes that we, we, we asked people to submit presentations under was the road to Cholula. So we're going to have things about Nahuatl, about life in Mexico, um, about Mexico mm -hmm. itself. And so we will have the elements of that uh, included. I know that Anya and her team at Zoloa Languages, um, who've partnering with us for this year as well as next year, uh, they've been very busy actually creating materials, creating videos, presentations that are going to be of interest for anybody with a fascination for Mexico. And uh, so joining us in Cholula, hopefully next year. <laughs> Right. Can you can you give us an idea, because you mentioned Nahuatl, is this the most widely spoken uh, indigenous language in Mexico? And how widely spoken is it compared to Quechua, compared to Guara, is it Guarani in Paraguay? In Guarani, other words, how, yeah. how big a language is Nahuatl? Um, so it's a very difficult question to answer. Um, mm -hmm. I, I'm not sure how it compares to the other ones. I wouldn't have those facts in my head. I'd need to Google that, <laughs> or at least to okay, ask somebody okay. with, 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 with better information than I've got. Um, but it is the local language of Cholula. So that's the local indigenous okay. language of Cholula, which is why Nahuatl is always mentioned sort of when we talk about the conference in Cholula. Now, the Nahuatl language, when you talk about language, is actually many different Nahuatl languages. There are, and, it, and it spans over Central America, so it's not just... Uh, mm -hmm. one Nahuatl language oh, okay. in, in Mexico. Mm -hmm. um, it's the same thing with the Mayan language. There are, actually, they're the Mayan right. languages. So they can sometimes be as diverse as Indo-European languages can be diverse. Uh, so it mm -hmm. could be, you know, as, as different as French and Italian, where they're not really right. going to be able to have a conversation with each other if they meet in the mm -hmm. street. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, another question that I have, this global conference looks like a, it's like so much that's happening around COVID. How much of this stuff is going to change how we live, how we work, how we behave, how we learn? So do you think there are elements of what you're doing for this global polyglot conference that will carry forward into future uh, polyglot conferences? Um, well, yes, <laughs> is the short answer to that. Um, yes, I do. Yeah. I think that it would be 
foolish to to think that we're going to go back to just the way it was before. I think that mm -hmm. this has been a game changer for many many reasons, and I think mm -hmm. the the sort of throwing the baby out with the bathwater and not not retaining what's what's good about what's happened would be foolish. Mm -hmm. I think that there are a number mm -hmm. of lessons to learn as a an events organizer to how we can actually add value to the conferences in the future. So I would definitely mm -hmm. like to see this global element uh, continue uh, throughout. Of course, I think there's there's always something to be said about getting together in person, breaking bread, going out, exploring a city, exploring a country together as a group. Mm -hmm. And it would be absolutely awful to think that we weren't going to do that again. So mm -hmm. I would definitely not want to go down that road and just say we're going to do it all online right. for, from now on. But at the same mm -hmm. time, there's an inclusiveness about doing it globally. And also taking this 10 day period is really quite exciting because we're not restricted right. by times. We're not restricted by space and by renting mm -hmm. certain areas to say, OK, you mm -hmm. have to speak this amount of time at this time on this day. And that's it. If it doesn't happen, mm -hmm. then it, that's it. It's gone. Whereas right now with this, we can say, if your presentation is 10 minutes long, it's 10 minutes long. It doesn't matter. It's not like you have to right. sort of occupy the stage and change things over mics and things. It's all done and it's mm -hmm. all ready. Mm -hmm. So we've got a lot of advantages right. from this that I think would be foolish mm -hmm. to throw out and not retain. One last question. You mentioned the word inclusiveness and mm -hmm. I've always felt that at our polyglot gatherings, conferences, long fest, everyone I meet there is able to put five, six, eight, nine, ten badges on their chest, <laughs> indicating the languages they speak. And I've always felt that we are kind of lim we always limit ourselves to those people who have already taken the plunge into mm. polyglotism and <laughs> enjoy learning lots of languages, and that there's a whole bunch of people on the sidelines that we should be, you know, getting mm -hmm. into the swimming pool with us. What? are you doing to get people who maybe don't even speak one other language mm -hmm. or, you know, speak one poorly and like, how, what are we doing to broaden the base beyond, you know, hardcore polyglots? Okay. So, um, I mean, the name, the name is the name of the conference. It's the name of the event, right. uh, polyglot conference, but we do have a tagline and it says for everyone who loves language. So we don't even say languages. We say F for everyone who loves language. And it's right. true. I mean, you can join the conference, even if you just speak English or you just speak French mm -hmm. or you just speak another language. OK, you might not understand all of the all of the content, but there's always something in there for you because we have talks from many, many areas. So mm -hmm. every year we have themes at the conference. So we've attracted people in the past, say, in Reykjavik, in Iceland. One of the themes was um, autism and multilingualism. So mm -hmm. how people with autism are affected when they have more than one language in the home environment or outside. And people came in and showed their research or their research plans for PhDs to, to discuss that from academia. And we also had people like uh, Daniel Tammet come over to talk about his experience learning Icelandic as somebody with Asperger's mm -hmm. syndrome. Now, we attracted people who came to the conference who were interested in the autism side of things and maybe had right. been interested a little bit in languages and they saw that actually it's really uh, applicable to them and the people that were at the event were not these elitist people who were you know saying oh you don't speak enough languages or anything like that and every year because we change this theme and because we add on in in, in Slovenia we had a language learning day just for people mm -hmm. who were learning their first second or third or whatever language and we invited right. anyone and everyone to come. So we had a full day for those people to mm -hmm. come and to join in and just right. to sort of show them how approachable we are. And you know, as well as I do, we're a pretty friendly bunch. And I think oh, um, the friendliness and the, the people are just accepted regardless of, of whatever. There is not a more supportive group than the polyglot group. But, but I guess I guess what I feel, you know, for people who love language, there's a lot of people who think they might love language but they have this recollection of trying to learn languages at school and they sort of say, well, I can't do it. You know, I'd love to be able to speak Spanish, but you know, it's a lot of work or I can't do mm -hmm. it or I was bad at it in school. And, and I just think if we can get people into the sort of environment that you just described this, 
environment of a bunch of friendly, supportive people, that that might encourage more people to learn languages. So hopefully mm -hmm. we will encourage some of those people to join us virtually exactly. and realize and sort of uh, get the fever, so to speak. Yeah, and I hope that, you know, things like this, talking about this kind of topic is really important. So the more we talk about it and the more we repeat the mantra of everybody's welcome and it doesn't matter whether you're learning right. your first or your 31st language, you're, you're welcome at the Polyglot Conference. And I think that everybody's going to find friends. And I've met people who have come for the very, the very first time and they said they were, they were sort of a bit anxious about coming, you know, mm -hmm. about the event. And they, they were quite open about that. And then they said, actually, do you know what? I don't know why I was so anxious and I don't know why I waited and I don't know why I missed that year and I waited to this year to come because everyone's so nice and they make friends for life. They end up going on holidays exactly. together. They end up talking together online and, and meeting with each other outside the conference. And every year I hear the same kinds of stories and it, it encourages me that we are opening up. We are opening out and reaching out. And, you know, I, I always give this example, actually, from my own life. One of the most inspiring people that I met in, in terms of languages was a monolingual English speaker who was just so well read and had a wealth of knowledge and a depth of knowledge of the English language that that person actually inspired me um, in my own language learning as much, if not more than many other multilinguals that I've met. Well, we're going to leave a link in the description box. Uh, we certainly don't look down our noses at people who only speak one language, uh, but we do enjoy the company of our enthusiastic and friendly polyglots. And so I'm looking forward to the conference. I'm look forward, looking forward to connecting with you and Anya and the others uh, virtually this year and hopefully the following year in Cholula. Yes, me too. Thank you very much, Richard. We'll be in touch. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Take care.